Hi right, guys, welcome back to Ben's Home Video, where today I'm looking at Arrow Video's 4K presentation of <gasps> Phenomena, continuing on the Halloween theme. <laughs> Yes, so Phenomena, which is a Dario Argento film, and my first ever Argento film, uh, was released in Italy originally at 116 minutes, and then someone in America bought the rights and got and cut it down to 83 minutes. So the version I watched of this is a hybrid version, so it has at least 83 minutes of English, and then whatever kind of was left over from the Italian cut. Is still in Italian because obviously they never did a proper version. So, um, yeah, so this is a review of the English Italian hybrid cut. But first, let's start with an unboxing. I can't remember which version this is because I've had it for a while now, but I think it was the original artwork. I did quite a few different releases. I had like Creep, this is the cover and new artwork and whatnot. I've got like five art cards with it, but I'm not going to bother showing you. They're just still from the film. But at first, this was the Italian version, and this is the international and creepy version. Both very important. First, you like the artwork at the front, which I don't think about it, I think is new artwork. Also, all the bad art cards go the original creepers release. And of course, what's an arrow release? We had a big old boo cut. Really someone as well. As always, you know, I'll never ask you for you to like or subscribe. It's up to you if you want to do it, but I will never ask you to like or subscribe. It's got all three versions on there, and they're all in Dolby Vision. But as I said, this is the hybrid one that I'm uh, reviewing. Its aspect ratio is 166 to 1, which means it's got little thin black bars down the side. Not the same as when you're watching like an old TV show, like a sitcom or something, where it's the big thick black bars. Just little thin ones down the side. The hybrid release comes with a 2.0 or a 5.1, I believe. I watched the 5.1. I could have just made up the 2.0 thing. And I ain't going to check. I don't care. That looks to you. I did just check, and it's only 5.1 for the um, hybrid release, which I believe was taken from the original 4 track that they did at the time. So it's um, it a 4.0, as they would say. Uh, they kind of convert it into 5.1. Um, the bitrate was kind of settled around the low 80s, pretty consistent on this one. Jumping and dropping very little throughout. Really sturdy. Sturdy? Sturdy. Film grain on this is how film grain should look. About three scenes for about five seconds each time did go super shitty, grainy, like way too much. But I assume that's to do with the quality of the original negative. Don't know. But the rest of the film, that's how film grain should look. It was perfect, proper filmic look to this. So your primaries are popping off the screen big time. Green was slightly unnatural at the beginning. Looked good, but it was unnatural looking. At the very, like the first scene basically, after that it was fine. But yeah, primaries. Black level's good, really good. Um, scene towards the end where she's somewhere and it's quite dark. And there's times where you can't even see where the black bars on the side ends and the film begins. So yeah, I'm happy. Whites are good as well. Whites are really good. Um, not yellowy, not grey. Really like white. Contrast. Um, not as good as I would have liked, but still pretty good. Definitely better than the previous Blu-ray, for sure, from what I've seen. I've never actually watched the film, I've just seen comparison images. Uh, fine detail looks good for the most part, like skin and everything like that, but hair seems to be like the standout on this one. You can see most, like, every individual strand pretty like, perfect there. I mean, this version actually looks really good, I think, but does get better. It 
this as well scenes where you can see how good contrast can actually be on 4K compared to the normal Blu-rays. As you can see, it's actually daytime and watch the one is white and not grey. So, as I said, it was the 5.1 English-Italian hybrid thing. Yeah. I mean, you get cars going past and stuff like that, and it sounds fine. But I don't know what the reasoning is, but the fucking people talking sounded all echoey and stuff. Not, not all the time, though. That's what made it worse. It, like, it sounded like they kind of double-layered it. It was like just every so often. I didn't write it, and like you could get the kind of it really like Shh, as people were talking. I think the word uh, sibilance, sibilance, where it's like where people put like a pop shield over a microphone to stop that. You could get that a lot with some of the characters um talking, but only in certain scenes. Other scenes it was spot on. So I don't know what the reason is behind that, but I don't think whoever's restored it. I don't think they've done that intentionally. Obviously, I think that's just something they couldn't get past. Yeah. All right. The um base level was all right. To be fair, it's quite punchy a lot of the times, and then towards the end when the kind of the uh, stakes are ramping up a little bit, it really kicked in a bit, and I was quite impressed. But mm, it's not great. Maybe I should have tried the two point oh. May maybe who knows? My score for the four K transfer done by Arrow or released by our at least is a three out of five the video part on 90 percent happy with the audio part can't give a shit about really so it's let it down a lot um it is probably the best it's ever looked don't know about best it's ever sounded uh if you've got the arrow blu-ray i probably wouldn't upgrade but if you've got like a DVD or an earlier release Blu-ray, that's not great. I don't really know much about the release, to be fair. It might be worth the upgrade. Have a look at the screenshots, see what you think. So my thoughts on the film. Uh, it was good. I wouldn't go as far as to say great. But apparently it's not a great Argento film compared to some of those like Suspiria and Cat and Nine Tales and uh, Eat Red. None of which I've seen, but apparently they're kind of like the main ones you should go for in Tenebrae, which I also got. Um, the acting I thought was quite bad at times. But is that because some of them aren't native English speakers and what? So I gave that a bit of a pass. I accepted it. I don't think Donald Pleasant's put in a great performance either for him before an um, actor of his quality and ability. Um, the chimp put in probably the best performance. Or monkey, whatever it was. I said some sort of primate. Fantastic monkey actor. But yeah, it was good. It had a good story. I feel like it just could have been something about it was just missing for me. But overall, good story. And I mean the last twenty minutes is a great tense ride, so it makes up for kind of some of the shortcomings early on in the film. Um I mean Jennifer Connolly is Jennifer Connolly, she's not the world's best actress, but is a solid job. Um, I feel like the story kind of just muddled through a little bit until, as I said, the last 20 minutes. Kind of how I do my reviews. Muddle through them. Bosh at the end. Fantastic. Um, but, yeah. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 as well. 2, 3 out of 5. So overall, that's a 6 out of 10, isn't it? Above average. Not good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to my other Argento films though, so might get another one in like Demons or something, so stay tuned. And just one final thing about it. Um the music is spot on. So the music by Goblin, which um is kind of the incidental music. And they had a couple of songs, one by I Maiden, one by Motorhead. And that's my jam. Thanks for watching guys.